All right, so we are getting this recorded just for future preference or future use. So good morning. How's everybody today? Did you have a good weekend? Y'all been, y'all look awful chip, chipper. I saw something the other day. It said we're about three weeks away from knowing every female's true hair color since they <laughs> can't get can't get to the store. Um, although I looked at mine, I saw a picture of me about three years ago. And in just three years, it's a big, big change in my gray hair. So, all right, today we're going to do chapter nine. Do we have any questions on chapter eight? Nope. There was one question that came up, just so that you know. When you're calculating those commission splits, the story should tell you split 50-50 amongst the seller or the buyer side of the table. Um, what happens to the buyer side of the table, we really don't give a damn. It's gone. All we know is if we're splitting 50-50 and I have to give half the commission to the REMAX, when, once it's gone, I don't care how it's split in the story or anything else or in real life, actually. All right. I bring the 50% back to the modulin group and then you and I split that however we've got it arranged. All right. Unmute. That must be you. I'm unmuted. Probably need to make them muted so I don't hear all the different background noises. All right. Jamon, how are you today? All right. So we're getting ready to start chapter nine. So chapter nine deals with agency. We talked a little bit about the brokerage on Friday. Um, and if you did not get the chance to attend that uh, course or class, remember you have it online so you can go back <coughs> and get the information. So today we're going to talk about agency. And this is the relationship that is created between you and the client. Or rather, I should say, between me and the client right because we all understand that all of the clients are what everybody say it mine they're all my clients all right my money my clients my commission my listing agreements my all of that you guys are representing me in this deal so agency works under what we call the common law of agency and there on page 138, you can see there are three types of laws that people deal with in a daily basis. The first one is common law. Common law is the law that is born out of court's decisions and can change. So it's potential that one small claims court might say, well, what Raymond's wearing is black. And then another judge may go, no, 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 what Cameron has on is actually defined as black. So it can change. Agency works under common law. It can change. There have been several changes in the last 10 or 15 years that have taken place. One major one that we talked about yesterday or Friday was the minimum level of services. That's a new law that came in in like 2008 that you now have to do these minimum things to fit agency. This is why you take your continuing education every year or every when you start so that in case there's a change, you can be made aware of that through the uh, continuing ed. So common law is one of them. Statutory law, that's codified law. That's like criminal code. You do this, here's your penalty. That's statutory law. Then they've got what they call administrative law, which is the Indiana state laws, which we will cover entirely with the last three days of this course. These are the laws that are used for us to define agency. So there's administrative law for the brokerages. There's administrative laws for bartenders. There's administrative laws for everything that has a license. All right. So we are going to talk today 
about the administrative or the common law of agency. But before we begin, there are a couple people that we need to talk about, and I want you to understand. So let's see if we can do this. I think I have a better screen to share today. So once again, you might want to make my picture a little bit bigger so that you can definitely get a side of this. And here's how this whole thing works. So first of all, we have this person here who is called a client. A client and an agent, an agent is a person who represents the client. They have an agency relationship. Now, this is a generic relationship. Peyton Manning had a sports agent and together they had an agency relationship. Britney Spears had a talent agent, which could be questionable, and there was an agency relationship between them. There is a client who has a real estate agent and we have an agency between us, all right? So that this layout that you see on the board here is a generic layout. The only difference is this definition of agency and they all have their own fiduciary responsibilities. Peyton Manning sport agency or sports agent has a different set of responsibilities than say Britney Spears' talent agent that is different than the seller's real estate agent. That's the only difference that defines it, all right? Now the client, and here's a tricky term, clients can actually also be called the principal. So you could interchangeably use either one of these two words. It's the client or it's the principal in the deal. And there's a third word that you could use. They are also called the seller or they could be called the buyer depending on which side because we have agency for both the sellers and we have an agency for both the buyers, okay? So a client or a principal or a seller are all interchangeable words that you will hear used by every agent. Most commonly you hear the client and seller. Very seldom do you hear them called the principal, but it is a legal word. Now the other term you need to understand is that is a very important word. It's called a client because here we also have this person, a customer. And a customer is a person with whom you have no agency. So understand that these two people have different meanings. Clients, you have an agency relationship with and therefore you owe them these responsibilities. A customer is someone with whom you owe no responsibility to. You still have to be honest and fair, but you certainly don't help them, all right? You do not help them. So in let me make sure I'm where I think I'm at. It's a lot different doing this sitting down than it is, it seems to be standing up for me. <clears throat> so we deal with the, this whole concept is very simple. This job is really simple. All you need to do is take a client and turn them, in, I'm sorry, <laughs> take a customer and turn them into a client. So when you go to Starbucks and you're standing in line and the guy in front of you, who you do not know, you have no agency with, he is your customer. And you hear him say, boy, I wish I could sell my house. I'm thinking about listing it. 
and you tap him on the shoulder and go, hi, I'm Raymond Modulin with the Modulin Group. Here's my card. And he says, great, I want to sign a listing agreement with you. You have created agency and he is now your client. And because of that, you owe him all of these duties. <laughs> he said duty. So we're going to get to all of those and you need to create this agency. So let me see if I can do this. Uh, nope, don't want to do that. Actually, nope. probably would have been easier somehow to create a new page. So the job is to take a client, a customer, and turn them into a client. Now, <clears throat> here we go. Let's watch this. Let's see if I can, how do I get back to that? What you're going to do is 99% of your jobs, you're going to have a client sitting beside you. Everybody follow me with that? When you sit at the closing table, your client is going to be sitting beside you. Across the table from you is the other agent. They have their client sitting beside them. Thumbs up so far? But your client is my customer. Got it? My client is your customer. You help your client. You do not help my client. You have to be honest and fair with the customer. You can't lie to the other side of the table and say, oh, the house is perfect. You have to be honest, but you don't help them. That's my job. So 90% of all the deals you ever close, you are going to sit with one client and one customer. You on that side of the table are going to be sitting with your client and your customer over here. All right. With your customer, you got to be honest. With your client, we are going to talk about your fiduciary responsibilities. It's one of my favorite words in this book, fiduciary. It always sounds fun to say. Now, when you create the agency and make that customer into a client, you can create agency in two ways. The first way, is called express agency. What does the word express mean? Everybody knows. Both people know. Your seller knows that he's your agent. And I know he's my client. Typically, express agency is in writing in the form of signing the listing agreement or signing the buyer's agency agreement, depending on what side. That is considered express agency. That's good thing. Now, there is another agency that is called implied agency. Implied agency is where one party or the other thinks there's agency, and there may not be. Aaron, are you alive? Okay. <clears throat> Remember, I, according to the state, typically I just have to make sure I got visual contact instead of your ceiling lamp. <laughs> um, so express it or express both parties know implied one party may or may not know. Now, most implied agency occurs by one of you people. You're brand new, you get excited, you get carried away, and let me show you how this happens. All right. So phone call comes in and you pick up the phone, you go, hey, modulin group. 
and they say, hey, I saw your sign 